Hello, today I would like to uh, give you guys a little video demonstration on how to do exploded view assembly drawings in NX. Uh, I'm using NX12, uh, so every once in a while you guys might need to make a drawing that shows what your assembly looks like and where some of the components go. And uh, there's a few little tips I'll give you that show you how to do that if you're not aware. Um, there's one little step that uh, unless somebody tells you, you don't really know how to do it. Uh, so I'll go through that today and hopefully get you guys uh, the information you need to be able to make your own exploded assembly drawings. All right, to get started, what you're going to want to do is first get your model kind of oriented in a way that you want your exploded view to work. Uh, so I kind of get it oriented on the screen because uh, we're going to do a lot of dragging of these parts and just kind of dropping them where they look good. So you kind of want to have an idea of where they're going to be clear of the other parts if you want a nice, really clean looking exploded view. But to start your exploded view, you're going to come up here. There's a button under your assemblies tab that says exploded views. We're going to hit that and hit create new explosion. Uh, it comes up with a dialog box. It just wants you to name it if you need to. Um, the only reason I would name the one was because I was doing more than one explosion in this assembly. So I usually just hit OK on that. The screen flashes and it doesn't really look like it did much, but if you come down here and look in the lower left-hand corner, it says exploded now in parentheses. So that means I'm working in an exploded view and it also means that my assembly constraints uh, no longer really apply. Uh, they're not gonna try and keep the parts in position anymore uh, or any wave linking that I've done that's locating parts is not gonna hold them in that position so I can move them around. So now if I come back up here to my edit explosion button, which is available now, I get another dialog box that's going to give me a couple options up here. So I have the option to select the objects. So you come down and pick what you want to move. I'm going to move um, everything except for the bottom piece to start with. So I'll draw a window around those. Uh, I'm going to hit move objects. The next thing I can do is come out here and I can use this drag handles to move my parts. And you can see they kind of jump right now. That's because snap increment by default is on and set to one inch, so it will only move it an inch at a time. Uh, or you can select a distance. If you come out here and pick, pick the Z-axis and pick a distance, it'll move it in that distance if you want to be really uh, accurate with the distances between them for some reason. I usually just turn the snap increment off, though, and kind of drag these up to where it looks good and then stop. So I am going to move those up to there and I'm gonna go back to select objects and it keeps everything selected. But what I wanna do is deselect, hold the shift button down and select that gasket piece. And then I'm gonna leave it there. So now it's not selected. When I go back to move objects, I'm moving the rest of them up again. So again, I'll go back to select objects, and this time I'm going to drop off the top piece and just move the fasteners up. And go back to select objects and drop off the washers. If you want to get that technical with it to make sure they're all exploded, pull those up. And now everything's exploded. Now on this one, I probably wouldn't explode the washers out of all of the screws because it's kind of busy up there, but uh, you get the idea of what we're doing here. Um, after that, if you want to put trace lines in, you can do that. There's an option up here. If we go to back to our exploded views, there's a trace lines button. So we can go down and pick uh, where we want our trace lines. The trace lines are pretty simple to use. You just pick two points. And it draws a trace line between them. So you could put trace lines in for all the objects or just a few of them. Depends on what you want your exploded view to look like. Uh, but that's probably enough for me. The trace lines also do a nice job if the the parts aren't exactly lined up. So let me go move another one here. So 
So let's move these guys out. And then go back to put our trace lines in. And say this washer is supposed to go in that hole. You can see it does a nice job of putting little jogs in your trace lines to get it uh, to go over to the area where you're pointing to. Uh, you can edit the jog lines a little bit. You can move the jog part up and down or uh, whatever you need to do there. You can also go back in and edit your jog lines later if you need to. If this jog was in the way of something else you've put in recently or changed things, uh, you can go back in and edit and uh, move it around. You can also right click on them and delete them so they're not stuck uh, in any means. So once you're done with that, now is going to be the time where we've got to get this into a drawing. So again, we're going to make sure that we want to have it oriented the way that we want our view to look with our components. So I'm going to have it kind of look like this. We're going to go up under the menu and go to view operation and then go down to save as. And then you're going to give it a unique name. So again, I'll call it exploded, but you can call it whatever you need. If again, you're doing more than one explosion and doing one more than one view you have to save, um, you can uh, just change it, the name to mean something for that area that you're working on. So I'm gonna hit okay. And if you look down here again at the area where it tells you what the view you're working on, it says exploded EXP, which is what I just called it uh, in the exploded view. So now, since I saved that view while the part was exploded, that view, when I put it in on my drawing in drafting, is going to show up as exploded. So now let's go into drafting where we can start to make our drawing. So now when we go to add our base view, um, we can put the top view in or whatever view you want to put. Uh, so if we put the front view in, what you're going to notice is it's not exploded. Okay, So that's why we had to save that view. So I'll undo that, go back to our base view again. And this time I'm going to select uh, the view I saved, EXP. Now when I place that view on the drawing, you can see it is exploded. All right. So, um, that's the only view it's going to show up exploded in any of the standard orthographic views that NX has saved in it. It's going to show up as its normal assembly. So uh, keep that in mind. You have to save that view of your own. Uh, one other thing that I don't like about it, by default, it puts these center lines in your views. So again, I'm going to undo that. You do not want those in there, which usually they get in the way of your trace lines. Again, it, it depends on the shape of your parts and what you're doing, but um, if they're in the way of your trace lines, when you come into place your top view or your EXP view, you can come down here to settings and go to general. And then down below it says create center lines. So we can turn those off, hit OK. And then when we place our view, there's no center lines on any of the round objects. So that cleans this view up. And this is not uh, a view that necessarily needs center lines anyway. So uh, once we get all that done, we can go up here and generate our parts list. And I'm not going to get too carried away with this. The parts list is generated from the file names and then the quantities of each. And there's some editing you can do to that that I'm not going to really get into right now. Um, the only other thing left to do is to get the balloons on your part. So the fastest way to do that is to come out here and right click on your view boundary and then hit uh, auto balloon. And I don't know why the balloons are so big, but that way you guys can see them a little better. So it labels one of each part based off of the parts list. A um, couple things. Sometimes it doesn't always label a part that is in a really good place. And sometimes it doesn't point to them in a very good uh, location. So you can edit these. You double click on it. And I can have it come over to this one instead and then just move the balloon over. So you can edit where the arrows are pointing. The rest of them actually look pretty good on this one other than the size of them. Um, and again, you can 
double click on them and edit them and change the size. So just change it back down to a quarter of an inch and fix that. Um, but that's how you get the balloons in. All right, so let's go back to modeling real quick and look at a few things. Let's say you're done with the exploded view. You're, you're going to want to go back to the assembly and add components or work on your assembly some more. Um, so if we go back to the assemblies tab and go to exploded views to get it back into our normal uh, assembly mode, we're going to turn this list back to no explosion. So that puts the parts back where they were. It does not say exploded views down here in the corner anymore. And uh, my assembly constraints and everything will go back to normal and control the location of the parts. Uh, and if we go back to drafting real quick, just to see what's going on there, you can see that this view is still exploded. So we still have our exploded view because we placed that EXP view that I saved while they were exploded in modeling, uh, it stays exploded in drafting. So hopefully that uh, gets you guys enough knowledge to be able to do your own exploded view drawings. Uh, if you have any questions, drop it in the comments below and hit that subscribe button if you would please and we will do some more videos and try and uh, keep this going. Thanks for watching.